Hey guys, welcome to another episode of IGCSE Biology Revision. Today we're continuing on with the topic uh, diseases and immunity and looking at these highlighted sections here. Now, it's really important that you watch my previous video before going into this one because a lot of the stuff, well not a lot, but the first two parts here where it says state that, that antibodies lock on to antigens leading to the direct destruction of pathogens and the second part here explain how each pathogen has its own antigens with specific shapes so these two have already been covered in the previous video and I'm sure that this is the most fundamental concept that you need to understand before you kind of try to understand this whole topic of diseases and immunity so please make sure you go to my previous video and watch that and make sure you understand it and then you can come back to this one and we'll be covering the rest of the stuff here um, immunity um, active immunity, passive immunity, and all the other stuff here, like vaccination. So have a quick read through that, and then we'll begin our video. So what is active immunity? Well, if you've watched my previous video, and you should be familiar with this huge flow chart here, well, that is active immunity, which is the immunity that results from the production of antibodies in the presence of an antigen. Now, we know that antigens are the things that are present on the surface of pathogens and they're very specific in shape. Now, how antigens are exposed to the body can either be just from purely an infection um, or a vaccination. So you probably have heard of the word vaccination before, but basically if there's a certain disease out there, for example, disease A, and disease A is caused by pathogen A that has antigen A on its surface. Okay, now what a normal reaction would be, would be you, you get exposed to that pathogen and you develop immunity against that. Okay, so eventually, you know, you, you'll have lymphocytes that match that certain pathogen and it releases antibodies and then our body will we'll get sick but eventually we should develop some kind of immunity against that and you know it should free us from being um, unhealthy for the rest of our lives because we develop immunity against that now some diseases are more detrimental than others okay so if we if we don't really well if we for example let's talk about disease b now and disease B is some kind of disease that kind of makes you really, 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 really sick. And honestly, none of us want to be that sick in the first place. Eventually, we might develop some kind of immunity against it. But why go through that in the first place? Therefore, we use this thing called vaccination. Um, now, what is this thing here? Now, vaccination um, is basically you manually expose yourself to a certain pathogen which has a certain antigen okay so if we're talking about disease b instead of us randomly getting exposed to an environment we give ourselves well the doctors will give you a harmless version of that pathogen so that our body um, reacts to that um, and therefore triggers an immune response so that our lymphocytes produce certain antibodies to counteract that pathogen so therefore if you have that immunity against that from being exposed to the harmless version of that pathogen then first of all you won't get sick and second of all you'll have developed immunity against that certain disease so that when you go out into the public or into the environment that which in which you're in and you get exposed to the real life version of that pathogen your body has already developed immunity to counteract that so therefore, we won't get sick as a result. And another thing is, when, when you vaccinate yourself and you're exposed with any type of pathogen and any type of antigen that comes with that, during that whole procedure, we get something called memory cells, which give us long-term immunity. So let's take a look at um, this diagram here that we should be familiar with. We've got pathogen A that has antigen A, and we've got lymphocytes that um, are, have complementary pairing to that antigen and therefore antibodies specific to that anti, um, antigen is produced 
and eventually kill the pathogen. But this whole series of reactions is not a quick one. Okay, it can take, I don't know, there's no specific time frame or anything like that, but this is not a fast process. For example, if you get a common flu, that flu can last a week or two before it actually goes away. That's how long it takes for your body to develop immunity against that certain flu. Okay, so if that flu was caused by pathogen A, let's just say it it took one week for this whole process to come through to have enough antibodies to counteract that. Now, eventually these antibodies go away. They don't last forever, okay? And so, however, during this procedure or during this reaction, we also get something called memory cells. Now, memory cells are cells that specifically can bind to the antigen that we were exposed to just then and they have a faster rate of producing antibodies if it ever gets stimulated again. So these memories, although the antibodies that were used to kind of counteract the pathogen goes away, memory cells lurk in our bloods for a quite a long period of time um, even after the flu is gone and we get healthy again. So let's think about this. We, we had a flu and it was caused by pathogen A with antigen A and we went through this whole procedure and we produced antibodies that destroyed it eventually and then we're now healthy again. Now what if two days later you go outside and then you get exposed to the same pathogen? Well, by that time the antibodies that we produced might have not might not be in our blood anymore because it's all been destroyed, it's gone, because it's not, those antibodies are not a long-term thing. However, what we have going for us is that we've got memory cells still lurking in our blood, and then once it gets stimulated, it can produce antibodies, the same type of antibodies that destroyed this pathogen in the first place, at a much, much faster race. Uh, sorry, not at a fast, a much faster pace or a rate than before. So this whole process might have took one week, but with memory cells, these guys can produce antibodies so quickly that it'll only take like a couple of hours or even a day um, to produce enough antibodies to destroy the pathogen. So therefore, we don't. it's very unlikely that you'll get caught with the same type of flu consecutively because we have this long-term immunity within us. So... That was active immunity. So what is passive passive immunity? Well, passive immunity is a short, short-term short immunity resulting from the introduction of antibodies from another person or an animal. And a very common example of this is from mother to infant via breast milk. Breast milk contains antibodies and other immune um, cells that kind of help the infant with their own immunity because infants are not developed enough to produce their whole um, immune cells and everything. Um, so they're much more prone to getting you know, diseases and stuff like that. So therefore, breast milk is very important in order for the infants to be healthy and have the immunity that they require in order to not get diseases from the environment. And one important thing about passive immunity is that they don't um, generate memory cells from this. You only generate memory cells when you go through this whole procedure of getting exposed to the antigen and um, having the lymphocytes get uh, stimulated and stuff like that. So, last one, type 1 diabetes. If you're not familiar with this, it's basically when the pancreas cannot uh, generate the insulin or even when it's because, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, the pancreas can't generate insulin, and insulin is needed to control blood sugar levels. Now, the reason why they can't is because our own immune system attacks the cells that make insulin. Okay, the details of this, I'm sure you don't need to know, but you just need to know that some diseases like this is where our own immune system attacks our own cells, and that, that's called an autoimmune disease. So once again, thank you so much for watching and um, I hope that that cleared up some of your, you know, um, questions and whatnot about the disease um, and immunity topic. It is a hard topic, but um, I'm sure if you 
kind of watch my videos a couple of times and you do some extra research on Google and textbooks and stuff like that, you'll you'll be fine. Cool. I'll see you next time.